Counseling Micro Skills Synthesis 2. In this short video, we demonstrate a diversity of micro skills. Okay, hey, Gina, welcome. It's nice to see you again. Um, last time we were talking a little bit at the end of our session about your challenges with working at home. And one of the things that I wanted to do today as we start is to just remind you that informed consent is something that you give all the way along in counseling and that you're perfectly free to say at any point in time, I don't want to talk about something or this is a path I don't want to go down. So I thought I would practice that a little bit today by just inviting you to see whether continuing to talk about this topic is something that fits for you and that you'd want to do today. Transparency. Sandra, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I'd like to talk more about that today. So, okay. Well, then why don't we start with you telling me what's been going on for you this week working at home? And um, that'll give us a bit of a sense of where you're at with this topic right now. Transparency. Mm -hmm. So after we talked last time, I feel a bit better about, um, about the working at home situation. It's a part of my everyday reality now because of COVID, it's all, all going through that. So um, in, in, in this week, I was reflecting on how can I be a bit more firm in terms of the, 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 the blurry boundaries between, okay, sh you know, shutting off my, my computer, my phone at a certain time, so I'm not continuously checking until the evening. So I thought I'm thinking a bit about that this week. Mm. So what kinds of things happen that pull you away from that boundary or blur that boundary a little bit? Questioning. Well, the reality is I have my phone with me all the time. So when there's a notification email, mm -hmm. I, I'm tempted to check and I often do check. And then sometimes I open it up, even though it doesn't have to be dealt with until the next day, I try, I would reply right away. And, and that, and then it gets to be, oh, it could be back and forth for an, a half an hour. And there is my time with my family, right? So how many times in an evening do you think you're, you would get that notification from your phone? Clarifying. Lots. <laughs> quite a bit, quite a few. So I think I need to perhaps not go there. You know, if it's an email, I can tell myself they can wait because nothing is an emergency. And if it is people who are important to me, they have my phone number, you know, so I can just let that sit and not check every few minutes in the evening. So, so lots could be Five times, 10 times, 20 times? Clarifying. Okay, at least five. At least five messages will come after 5 p.m., for example, mm -hmm. um, up to 10. So, um, so that's where I need to be mindful. Do I not reply after 5 p.m.? I don't think I'm comfortable with that because I have students in practicum and they may be seeing clients. So maybe it's after seven I'm comfortable with when the clinic is, is closed uh, after 7 p.m. So maybe that's the cutoff time. Yeah. And what other kinds of things are happening that, that um, contribute to that creep into your, what you consider your personal time? Questioning. There's a sense of responsibility. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of, you know, students have told me, Gina, you're so good at replying promptly. Um, and you know, you've been so helpful when you do. So I, I guess I want to be helpful. I want to be there for my students and, and clients. So I think I don't want to let them down. I think maybe that's what it is. It's interesting because having worked from home for a long time, um, 20 years, I, I really resonate with this from my early days in working from home. And it's not something that for me has gone away. I've just kind of over time learned tools and tricks that work for me that have helped me to contain the time that I spend in work. Self-disclosure. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what kinds of things you've used to contain work um, at other points in your life that might be transferable into this experience of working from home? Probing. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, at the point in my life, I would drive to, you know, the university or drive to my practice, drive to the side and then come home. So there's this definite, okay, I'm home now, say hi to my family. So maybe how I can make that transferable is once I leave my workstation here, taking a pause, when I walk down the stairs, that could be like my commute home. Mm -hmm. And then again, maybe being firm with the 7 p.m. If people need to talk to me, it's an emergency, they will call me. Mm. One of the things that I've um, learned in talking with other people who also work from home or who are having challenges creating boundaries in their workplaces is that similar kind of thing that you're experiencing around needing to create rituals of transition. It's whatever the ritual is of being able to move from now I'm in my workspace to now I'm in my home or personal or leisure space. Validating. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that there's this common experience. Um, and it's not just me. I, I know it's not just me, but sometimes it feels that way. So to hear you say that, Sandra, is, is really helpful. So Gina, when you think about uh, rituals of transition, tell me what has worked for you in the past when you've had to make a transition from one event or one experience to another. Probing. Um... Yeah, I think going back to what I just said about the pause, I think it's um, the not rushing, you know, sometimes it can be also dangerous. I'm rushing from one to, if it's, I'm, I'm becoming late, I actually tell myself, it's okay, you know, that um, I might be late right now, or um, I, I need to, to pause and just regroup and then, and then go. That helps a lot. And I've been trying to practice some mindfulness um, techniques now too. So that daily practice of being mindful has, has, has helped a lot, actually. So what does the pausing do for you uh, emotionally to help you move from that one space to another space? Questioning. The, the pausing slows things down for me, you know? And a part of the pausing, even let's say, um, I'm talking to my friends and like the pausing helps me slow down my, my speech. It helps me feel like more grounded and then we can move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. 